about heterojunction semiconductor laser in the previous video we have seen that what is a semiconductor laser and what are the different types of semiconductor laser basically the semiconductor laser are of two types one is homojunction semiconductor laser and the second one is heterojunction semiconductor laser further this heterojunction semiconductor laser that is of two types one is single heterojunction and double heterojunction further we have seen that the direct band gap semiconductor materials are suitable for laser construction and in case of homojunction we are having same semiconductor material on either side of the active region but in case of heterojunction semiconductor laser there are different semiconductor materials on either side of the active region in the last video we have discussed about homojunction semiconductor laser in which we have seen what is the structure of this homojunction semiconductor laser how it is fabricated and how it operates right further at the end of the video we have seen what are the drawbacks associated with homojunction semiconductor laser here in case of homojunction semiconductor laser the active region is not well defined it operates at high forward current it cannot operate continuously at room temperature because of which we are getting pulsed outputs as the refractive index is almost constant throughout the device light diffuses from active region to the surrounding this is the active region and the light is diffusing to its surrounding regions and that leads to increase in cavity losses to overcome these drawbacks another semiconductor laser structure was proposed which is heterojunction semiconductor laser so let us see how the heterojunction semiconductor laser overcomes all these drawbacks associated with homojunction semiconductor laser let us now look into the device structure of heterojunction semiconductor laser the device structure of this heterojunction semiconductor laser is more or less similar to homojunction semiconductor laser but what are the differences let us look into that first we will look into single heterojunction semiconductor laser so this is the device structure one is p plus one side is n plus and the active region is p in nature and further metal contacts are provided on the two sides to connect the device into a circuit so these are the metal contacts over here okay and this blue one that is our active region so this is the active region of the semiconductor laser in case of homojunction semiconductor laser we have seen that all these three regions this p plus p and n plus all three regions were made up of gallium arsenide so what is the difference in case of this single heterojunction semiconductor laser here this n plus region that is made up of gallium arsenide now the active region is made up of gallium arsenide again but coming to this p plus region that is made up of aluminium gallium arsenide so here if you will consider this active region it is in connection with this n plus region in one side and it is connected to this p plus region at the other side now if you will consider this junction here it is gallium arsenide and this n plus is also gallium arsenide so we are having same type of material so i can consider this junction as homojunction right same material but coming to this junction over here here one side is gallium arsenide the other side we are having aluminium gallium arsenide so this one is heterojunction in nature 
so we are having a single heterojunction in this semiconductor laser and hence the name is single heterojunction semiconductor laser now coming to the second type that is double heterojunction laser here this is the structure you can see this is n plus p is the active region and this is p plus these are the metal contacts right now we will look into the materials used for different regions so here the active region is made up of gallium arsenide the n plus region that is made up of aluminium gallium arsenide and p plus region is also made up of aluminium gallium arsenide now coming to the junctions here you can see the materials on either side of this junction these are different this is aluminium gallium arsenide and this is gallium arsenide so this junction is made up of two different materials now coming to here also this is gallium arsenide and this is aluminium gallium arsenide so both the junctions are heterojunction in nature and that's what the name of this device is nothing but heterojunction semiconductor laser so now i think you must be cleared with what is the difference between this single heterojunction and double heterojunction semiconductor laser here one side we are having different material here on both side of the active region we are having different materials as compared to the material of the active region now let us see the cross-sectional view of this so this is single heterojunction semiconductor laser this active region which is p type that is made up of gallium arsenide and this n plus that is also made up of gallium arsenide but this p plus region that is made up of ga aluminium gallium arsenide coming to the second one that is double heterojunction semiconductor laser the active region is made up of gallium arsenide and both p plus and n plus regions are made up of aluminium gallium arsenide now coming to the working of heterojunction semiconductor laser the basic principles are same as that of homojunction semiconductor laser but here in this case the intensity of the light is more and the cavity loss is less so how that is possible let us look into that as most of the working principles are same as that of the homojunction semiconductor laser i will not explain those things in much detail you can go into the previous video and look into that so the refractive index of active region is larger compared to the outer layers here the active region is gallium arsenide but the materials used on the either side of the active region they are either gallium arsenide or aluminium gallium arsenide here the refractive index of gallium arsenide is more as compared to the refractive index of aluminium gallium arsenide and in case of double heterojunction the refractive index of this active region is more compared to both the sides right because in both sides we are having aluminium gallium arsenide further as we have discussed in the previous lecture the active region is usually lightly doped compared to the other regions that's what i have shown the active regions are p and these are p plus and n plus now under forward bias carriers are injected into the active region and because of which population inversion takes place so when we are making all these forward bias okay that means this p side should be connected to p terminal and n side should be connected to the n terminal of the applied source so when it is forward biased then these electrons they will be injected over here right so because of which we are getting this is a p plus p type material but we are getting large number of electrons over here which leads to population inversion the recombination leads to 
emission so where electrons are coming over here they are recombining with the holes because of which we are getting light emissions we have discussed that initially the emissions are spontaneous emissions but as the forward current increases after a particular threshold value stimulated emission starts and that is the principle for working of a semiconductor laser right now we will see how the light is coming as we have already discussed all those things in homojunction semiconductor laser i'll just brief that over here so when the stimulated emission starts those light or the photons of light they will move over here this is the active region and we have seen that two faces are polished through cleaving so this face and this face are polished and further this front face and the face back to this these two faces are roughened and because of which there occurs a optical cavity or resonant cavity right and when the light is moving to and fro over here that triggers more stimulations and hence we are getting multiple photons over here and if one face is partially transmitting in nature then light will come through this face but if both the faces are partially transmitting in nature then light will come from this face as well similar things happens over here this is the resonant cavity this face and the other face they are polished through cleaving and this front face as well as this back side face those two are roughened thus the light moves through this optical cavity over here if only one face is partially transmitting in nature light will come through this face okay and if the other face is also transmitting in nature so light will also come from this side right this is how we are getting lights in case of a semiconductor laser further we have seen that the wavelength of the emitted light that is equals to hc by eg and this eg is nothing but the energy gap of the material which is used in active region let us now summarize the advantages of heterojunction semiconductor laser there are many advantages of heterojunction semiconductor lasers but the main advantages are the heterojunction semiconductor laser gives high intense light and the cavity loss is also very less in case of heterojunction semiconductor laser let us understand these two points how it is possible to get high intensity light with less cavity loss in case of heterojunction semiconductor laser here i have shown you three structures the first one is for homojunction semiconductor laser this one is for single heterojunction semiconductor laser and the third one is for double heterojunction semiconductor laser now we will see how the refractive indices varies in three different regions in case of all the three semiconductor lasers and how the intensity is increasing from homojunction to double heterojunction semiconductor laser further we will see how the cavity loss is decreasing from homojunction semiconductor laser to double heterojunction semiconductor laser first i will show you how the refractive indices varies in different regions of different semiconductor lasers here i have taken the refractive index along the y axis and x axis gives us the different regions of the semiconductor laser coming to this one this is the active region so the active region is bounded by these two dotted blue lines and these two are the other two regions 
Now, in case of homojunction semiconductor laser, all the three layers they are made up of same type of material that is gallium arsenate. Only difference is that these two regions they are highly doped as compared to the active region. Now, if all the three are made up of single material, then the refractive index should also be same throughout the device. But as these two regions they are highly doped, here we are having less refractive indices in these two regions as compared to the active region. So this is what we can get the refractive indices of P plus and N plus region is slightly less as compared to the refractive index of the active region. This variation is very less. Now coming to the single heterojunction semiconductor laser. Here these two if you will see both are made up of gallium arsenate. So the variation in refractive index should be same as the case over here. The difference lies in this junction. Here the variation is very less. But if you will consider this junction over here. This is the active region. Further, the refractive index of gallium arsenide is large as compared to the refractive index of aluminum gallium arsenide. Thus, this is the variation in refractive indices in case of single heterojunction semiconductor laser. Here, across this junction, if you see, there is a large variation in the refractive indices, right? Now coming to the third one that is double heterojunction semiconductor laser. This is the active region and here both the junctions we are having heterojunctions. So there are large differences in the refractive indices. This is the basic modification in the device because of which we are getting high intensity output and the cavity loss is very less in case of double heterojunction semiconductor laser. You will be surprised to know that the principle behind this improvement is total internal reflection. All of you must have read about total internal reflection during your intermediate. Just to refresh your mind, I am telling in brief what is total internal reflection. So let us consider two medium. This is medium 1 and this is medium 2. And medium 2 is rarer as compared to medium 1. So, when light moves from one medium to another medium, refraction takes place, right? So, let this is the normal. The light is being incident over here. This is angle of incidence. So, when it is moving to a rarer medium, it will move away from the normal. So, this is angle of refraction and R will be greater than I. So, when we are increasing this angle of incidence at a particular value of angle of incidence, the angle of refraction will be equals to 90 degrees. So, here will be the refracted ray that will be along the interface. And that angle is known as critical angle of incidence. So, when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle of incidence, then the light will come back to the same medium. And that is known as total internal reflection. Okay, because now it is coming to the same medium, that's what it is, reflection. And this is the basic principle based on which the light is now being confined into the active region. Here in the first case, all are having almost same refractive indices, right? So the light can diffuse more into the outer range. This is the active region that can diffuse outside the active region. Here the, in this side, there is a difference in refractive index. This is a denser medium and this one is a rarer medium. So total internal reflection takes place at this junction. But in case of double heterojunction semiconductor laser, total internal reflection takes place on both side of the active region. This is the principle because of which light is being confined inside the active region. Now let us look into the intensity for different semiconductor lasers. For homojunction 
this is the intensity and if the light is going beyond the active region this region between these two blue lines this is the active region okay if light is going beyond the active region this will be considered as cavity loss and in case of homojunction semiconductor laser there is lot of cavity losses now coming to the second one that is single heterojunction semiconductor laser you can see here the total internal reflection takes place at this junction which is a heterojunction at this side the cavity loss is less as compared to the other side which is a homojunction now coming to the third one both the side of the active region they forms heterojunctions okay and hence the cavity loss is almost negligible and all the light they are confined into the active region that means the intensity is very high in case of heterojunction compared to the rest two it is minimum in case of homojunction in single heterojunction the intensity increases and there is further increase in intensity if we are considering double heterojunction semiconductor laser now let me brief about the advantages of heterojunction semiconductor laser the active region is well defined in this case further as we have seen almost all the light they are confined to the active region that means loss is very minimal hence the efficiency is very high in case of heterojunction semiconductor laser it operates at low forward current as compared to homojunction semiconductor laser further it operates continuously at room temperature as the refractive indices are different light is more confined to the active region because of this the cavity loss reduces okay so these are the advantages of heterojunction semiconductor laser over homojunction semiconductor laser today we will stop here in the next class we will have a comparison between homojunction and heterojunction semiconductor laser further i will be discussing about the figure of merit of semiconductor laser thank you all if you like the content of the video please press the like button and share the channel link with your friends thank you all